Welcome to the new and improved Maris football update for week three. I'm Mike Ferraro, along with the head coach of the Red Foxes, Jim Parody. And coach, let's talk about last week's game at Bucknell. It was a 28-14 loss, but what positives do you glean from that? Well, the thing that we look at is that it was a fourth quarter game, and uh, we got down 14-0 in the first quarter, early in the second quarter, came back, made it 14-7 at halftime, got down 20-7, came back, made it 20 14 uh, had two possessions in the fourth quarter to get a victory out of it. We were unable to convert at that point, uh, so we kept playing. I thought our effort was great during the course of the game. I just thought our execution lacked in certain, certain areas. Terrence Fade had one of your three sacks in the game on Saturday, and he also blocked a field goal. So he has three sacks through two games. Talk about the impact he's made for you so far this season. Terrence is a great addition to be back on our football team. We're very happy to have him back with us. Uh, I think as you look at our defense, he's made a, a big difference in our pass rush, as you said, with the sacks, and uh, he made the big play on special teams. But he's a guy that I think people have to game plan for. They have a tough time single, singling him, and a lot of times he'll, he'll draw some doubles uh, in the blocking schemes. Offensively, let's talk a little bit about Ryan Dinabiel. He had 50 yards rushing in the game on Saturday and also scored a touchdown. And on your first scoring drive, he was certainly impressive on that. Yeah, I thought uh, the biggest thing with Ryan from last year to this year is his vision. And uh, as he's gotten out into the second level, he's been able to make some people miss. And on his touchdown run, he made an, a very nice jump cut uh, from the B gap out to the C gap. And then he ran over the safety at the, t at the goal line. Uh, so it was just a, a nice progression for him. Whereas last year, I think what, what would happen is that as he got out in the secondary, he might have been tackled at the two or three yard line. This year he was able to get all the way in the end zone and his vision has a lot to do with that. Now taking a look at this week's opponent, Dayton, new quarterback this year, but an experienced defense and a program that has a rich tradition of winning. Dayton's a great program in, in the history of the Pioneer League. They've always been near the top of the league, and last year's game against them was a great game here at Leon and Duff. And, uh, you know, as we go out there, they, they've reloaded. They have uh, nine or ten seniors starting on the defensive end, uh, and so they're, they're really uh, been solid in their first two weeks in their games against Robert Morris and the game against Duquesne last week. They've been very solid on the defensive end. Offensively, I think they're still trying to find their identity. They did score 19 points and, and 13 points in the first two weeks. It's very tough to replace the uh, Pioneer League you know, Offensive Player of the Year. That kid was very dynamic for them. And uh, as you look at it, uh, they're, they're just a challenge every single time that you play them, and you know that you got to play your, your finest football game to come out of there with a victory. That's the Marist football update for week three. For Jim Parody, I'm Mike Ferraro, and be sure to check us out on GoRedFoxes.com on Saturday as Ed Weir and myself will have the call beginning at 1245.